Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 13.3 finding functions. 13.3 represents chapter 13, section 3 of the Pearson A Level Mass Film Mass Year 1 textbook. Let's go through the key facts of this section. Ladies and gents, going from y to dy dx, we need to differentiate. Going from dy dx back to y, we need to integrate. So we know that integration is the reverse of differentiation. Alternatively, you can write y as f of x. Going from f of x to f dash of x, we need to differentiate. Going from f dash of x back to f of x, we need to integrate. Using this particular concept, we can write down y is given by integrating dy with dx with respect to x. Alternatively, you can rewrite this as f of x is given by integrating f dash of x with respect to x. So if we carry out this integration, we get that f of x is equal to some function g of x plus c, where c is the constant of integration. Now, if a point A, x1, y1 lies on the curve y equal f of x, you can find the complete equation of y equal f of x by substituting x equal x1 and y equal y1 to find c, the constant of integration. Once you've got c, you put it back into the function and then you get f of x equal g of x plus your constant c. Right, so these are the key facts of 13.3 finding functions. I'll be implementing these key facts within exam style questions. Let's have a look at exam style question one dy dx is equal 3x to the power minus a half minus 2x square root x, where x is greater than 0. Given that y is equal to 10 and x is equal to 4, find y in terms of x, giving each term in its simplest form. Ladies and gents, what I'm going to first of all do is rewrite the second term so that it can be integrated. So we've got 2x square root x, which is rewritten as 2x multiplied by square root x is the same as x to the power a half. Okay, so we've got 2 x times x to the power half. This power of x is 1. So we have 1 plus a half. So x to the power 3 over 2. So ladies and gents, the 2x square root x can be rewritten as 2x to the power 3 over 2. Right, so now I'm going to rewrite my dy dx as 3x to the power minus a half. Replace the second term with minus 2x to the power 3 over 2. Okay, so both terms are in a position to be integrated. To work out y, we need to integrate the dy over dx with respect to x. So y is given by the integral of 3x to the power minus a half minus 2x to the power 3 over 2 with respect to x. So now I can carry out term by term integration. Add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. So we've got y equal 3x to the power minus a half plus 1 divide by minus a half plus 1. Then we've got minus 2x to the power 3 over 2 plus 1 divide by 3 over 2 plus 1 plus c, the constant of integration. Okay, so the number that I have in front of the x over here is 3, so I take 3 and I divide it by minus a half plus 1. The number that I have in front of the x here is minus 2, so I take minus 2 and I divide by 3 over 2 plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to be simplifying the coefficients. So I've got y equal, I can put this into my calculator, 3 divided by minus a half plus 1, which is 6, x to the power minus a half plus 1, which is a half. Okay, moving on to the second term. So now I can put minus 2 over 3 over 2 plus 1 into my calculator. So if I do this, I get minus 4 over 5, x to the power 5 over 2, okay, plus c, the constant of integration. We're going to substitute these values into this equation in order to generate an equation involving c, the constant of integration. Okay, so we can replace the y with 10, and we can replace the x's with 4. So I've got 6 multiplied by 4 to the power a half minus 4 over 5, multiplied by 4 to the power 5 over 2, plus c, the constant of integration. Okay, so now we can simplify this over here. So if I put this into my calculator, I get minus 68 over 5, plus c. So c is equal to 10 plus 68 over 5, hence c is equal to 118 over 5. To get the final mark, I can write my complete equation for y. So I've got, therefore, y is equal 6x to the power of a half minus 4 over 5 
x to the power 5 over 2 plus 118 over 5. So that there, ladies and gents, is y in terms of x. This completes exam style question 1. Moving on to exam style question 2. A curve has equation y equal f of x where x is greater than or equal to 0. Given that, first bullet point, f dash of x is equal 4x plus a square root x plus b where a and b are constants. Second bullet point, the curve has a stationary point at 4, 3. Third bullet point, the curve meets the y-axis at minus 5. Find f of x, giving your answer in its simplest form. Ladies and gents, let's have a look at the solution. Firstly, we know that f of x is given by integrating f dash of x with respect to x. So, to work out f of x, we need to integrate the f dash of x, which is 4x plus a square root x, which is the same as a x to the power of half plus b, and we are integrating with respect to x. So now I can carry out term by term integration. Add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. So I've got f of x is equal 4x to the power 1 plus 1, divide by 1 plus 1, plus ax to the power a half plus 1, divide by a half plus 1, plus bx plus c the constant of integration. Now I'm going to simplify the coefficients. We can start off with 4, divide by 1 plus 1. That would just be 2, x to the power 2. Then we've got positive a, divide by a half plus 1. That would just be positive 2 over 3a, x to the power a half plus 1, which is 3 over 2, plus bx plus c, the constant of integration. Okay, let's have a look at the second bullet point. The curve has a stationary point at 4, 3. Let's write this down. The curve has a SP shorthand stationary point at 4, 3. This implies that the gradient on the curve at x equal 4 is 0. So mathematically, we can write down f dash of 4 is equal 0. Okay, so f dash of 4 is equal 0. This implies that we can substitute x equal 4 into f dash of x. So we have 4 times 4 is 60, plus a times square root 4, which is 2a, plus b. This must equal 0. So now I can take the 16 to the right-hand side. This gives me 2a plus b is equal minus 16, equation 1. Okay, right. Third bullet point, the curve meets the y-axis at minus 5. Let's write this down. The curve meets the y-axis at minus 5. So what does this mean mathematically? This implies that f of 0 is equal minus 5. At a y-intercept, x is equal 0. Right, so I can substitute x equals 0 into my function f of x, which is over here. Right, so I've got that becomes 0, that becomes 0, that becomes 0, then we're left with c. So c must equal minus 5. Okay, so now I've got my constant c. Right, so I can put my c equal minus 5 back into the f of x. So f of x is equal 2x squared plus 2 over 3 ax to the power 3 over 2 plus bx minus 5. Okay, now, the curve has a stationary point at 4, 3. This means that 4, 3 lies on the curve. So now I can write down this point over here, 4, 3, lies on the curve y equal f of x. This implies that f of 4 is equal to 3. When x is equal 4, y is equal 3. So now I can substitute x equal 4 into my f of x. So I've got 2 multiplied by 4 squared plus 2 over 3a multiplied by 4 to the power 3 over 2 plus um, 4 times b is just 4b minus 5, this must equal 3. 
So 4 squared is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. 32 take away 5 is 27. Plus 2 over 3 multiplied by 4 to the power 3 over 2 is just 60 over 3a. Okay? Plus 4b is equal 3. So we've got 16 over 3a plus 4b is equal 3 take away 27, which is minus 24. Equation 2. Right, so I've generated two equations involving a and b. We need to solve them simultaneously. So I've got 2a plus b is equal minus 16, equation 1, and 16 over 3a plus 4b is equal minus 24, equation 2. So simultaneously, okay, so if we do this, we get a equal minus 15, B equal 14. Okay, so all that remains is to substitute a equal minus 15, b equal 14 back into the function f of x to get a complete equation. Therefore, f of x is equal 2x squared. 2 over 3 multiplied by minus 15 is minus 10. x to the power 3 over 2 plus 14 times x, so that's just 14x minus 5. So that there is the complete equation for f of x. Ladies and gents, this completes exam style question 2 and this teaching video 13.3 finding functions. If you found this teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.